Hey guys, how's it going? Today is going to be a bit of a mixed bag. There are several things that we have to work on, a couple of project updates for you. We're starting here in the Hartley because Garner Supply just sent a couple of boxes. I have a suspicion that there are amaryllis in one of them because they typically send out amaryllis this time of year, but I'm not positive. So anyway, we've got two boxes and a bag of broccoli to take to the chickens. <laughs> I just made a broccoli salad inside. Whenever it says open immediately and then living gardens potted, pre-rooted flower bulbs. Yeah, gotta be amaryllis. Let's get into it. Oh, it's a big one. I think there are three bulbs in there. Ooh, fun. Just set that right down in there. And what do we got here? It says it's the doublet potted amaryllis trio. So I'm just looking it up on their website really quick to see what they look like. Ooh, oh, they're pretty. So red and white striped petals. The petals look a little bit thinner than normal petals, but tons of blooms per stem. That is gonna be gorgeous. Oh, how fun. And I do wanna keep it out here. I have uh, the trio that I planted up, the white ones, the white doubles sitting here right in the center of the table and all the rest of them, I'm looking around, but I think all the rest of them ended up inside the house that we potted the other day. So let's go give this a little bit of a drink. And that's all the water they will get until I start to see some green growth, which shouldn't be too long now that they've been watered in and they're in a bright warm spot. Ooh, looks like my dill might need a little water. This dill dries out so fast, but it's doing really well. Looks like I need to groom a couple leaves off too. Imagine what that smells like. Mmm, heaven. That's what it smells like. The smell of dill and the smell of green onions. When you're chopping up green onions, which I did this morning for the broccoli salad I made, uh, those two smells remind me of spring. They just conjure up all the spring feels. Basil's good, thyme is good, and oregano looks good. Okay, let's get into box number two. I have no idea what's in here. Oh, I, I have these, I think. These are the hanging bird cage planters. They come in a set. I actually have a set in the barn already. Um, so it's kind of fun. I can use these maybe either uh, group together on a set of stairs outside and put candles and greens and stuff. I think that would be really pretty or we can hang them somewhere. This one I can't hang, not yet. Maybe I can get a hook sent out. I scoured the box and the packing material, all of that. Uh, looked on the floor around where I've been working and I cannot find that hook. I thought maybe it was taped to the bottom or inside and it's nowhere to be found. So I can't hang this one at the moment, um, but you're meant to be able to hang them. And then there's a door that swings open. Oops. So you can do your arrangement or put a potted plant in there and it just provides a really pretty home for whatever arrangement you decide to put in there. Well, that was a really fun delivery. Thank you, Gardener Supply, for sending those things out. Fun early Christmas present. And I will uh, post pictures for you guys of the amaryllis when they start to bloom. It'll be fun to see what they look like in person. Okay, so now I'm gonna run the broccoli to the chicken coop and then we are going to head to the greenhouse for the project updates. Hey girls. Broccoli stumps, super exciting stuff. Hi Bev. These girls just got through molting. They look so much better than they did just a few weeks ago. Oh, they were starting to look bald. You four are very quiet. All right, we gotta liven this crowd up. This'll do it. It's warm in here. We've been keeping it right about 70 is where it's at during the day right now. Um, so when you step in here from outside, it feels so, so good. Uh, so the two projects in particular I wanted to update you on in here are the lawn and the tomatoes. There really are quite a number of different things going on in here. And in the next couple of weeks, I'm starting some other growing projects that I'm really looking forward to. But right here is where I unpacked all of the wholesale flora stuff that I ordered for holiday containers. So you can see the lily grass and the pittosporum, the most beautiful rose hips ever. And there's some winterberry holly right here. And then we've got the acacia. This is the feather acacia. 
and the seeded eucalyptus. So I took all of these out of the boxes and cut the bottoms, cut the stems, and just put them in our Christmas light totes that were empty with a little bit of water. But here's our lawn. You can start seeing some green. It's coming up beautifully. Now one side is coming up quicker because this side right over here, you can see that there's a little tiny bit of green. It's all coming up. It's just slower because I put that on top, that tabletop that's just sitting there leaning against the tables. Just having those extra boards provided enough shade to slow down the process here. It'll all catch up and be fine. That's how Russell gets in. Hey dude, and there's cheddar up there. This is where they hang out now. I don't blame them. But we've got some sunny days on the forecast this week, so I think that this side will have a chance to catch up. And I'm just really happy to see just a little haze of fresh green. Something about that that just, oh, I love it. And it really will be no time. Uh, this thing will be all thickened up and beautiful and ready to walk on. One thing that did negatively impact the grass slowed down the process and it killed some of our tomato plants possibly is a door came open last week and it stayed open all night one of the nights that it was, I don't know, high teens, low 20s that night. Um, when I came in here the next morning, the four inch tomato plants were blocks of ice and they just looked horrible. There are a few that magically made it through. What happened is this door latch, we recently replaced it with a new one, not realizing it was a lemon. So sometimes this latch would go all the way down, but sometimes it was only, you can kind of see where it was. Sometimes it was only latching part of the way. So it just kind of popped open one day and the door opened. Anyway, let me show you the tomatoes. I was bummed. I tried not to be super bummed. Usually when a garden calamity happens, I let myself be bummed for like an hour and then we have to move on because things like just this just happen. Okay, so here are the tomatoes. So I don't know how these survived. You can see that they aren't super happy about their life, but I mean, some of these are still blooming, uh, but these things, I mean, just absolute hard blocks of ice. Uh, the ones that didn't look very good, like the whole stock was squishy. I cut them back right above where, or right below rather, where the squishy part was. And they might push new growth, they may not. Uh, I mean, thankfully we have a few to work with here and I can start new seeds right away and it shouldn't be too long to where we have, you know, the size of plant again. These are the ones I was most bummed about. And I did take video and I think Aaron and Ken are gonna cringe. I think I took vertical video, but we can show you what they looked like right after that happened. Um, anyway, because they look different today. So these are the ones I took as cuttings, sucker cuttings off of the plants we had growing outside. And uh, we rooted them. They were setting tomatoes. I left a couple on because I just couldn't, couldn't bear popping them off. But there was one, let's see, it was the Dr. Weichi's yellow back there, had a big, beautiful tomato set on it. And they all had rooted just amazingly well. And they were about this tall. And just that cold just kind of wiped them out. Now the stalks look green and nice. So again, I cut below the squishy growth. We'll see what happens. I don't know. And then these are the potted ones I had that were full of tomatoes. So I had to cut off branches of shriveled up beautiful tomatoes. And in that situation, there really isn't anything that any of us could have done to prevent that from happening. We didn't realize the latch wasn't working properly. So now it is. <laughs> We've adjusted things to where we know for sure. And I think all of us are just like double and triple checking it now just to make sure. But anyway, kind of a bummer that that happened. I'm thankful there's a few though. Um, so I think what we'll do is start a few inside in the studio and then we'll pop them out here once they put on a little size, but we'll do that project together here shortly. So now I'm gonna go gather up. I don't think it's started to snow yet. Nope. I'm gonna go gather up a few of those bulbs and hopefully the ground is thawed up enough to where we can get them in the ground. They are crocus and scillas though, so that I think they only have to go three inches deep. So that's to our benefit. This is another thing that we're doing. <laughs> just to make sure. Oh, there's another box from Gardeners. I didn't know there was three boxes. Let's get this, is this one open? No, let's get it opened up. It's a birdcage support. All right. I love these kinds of supports. The birdcage support here, I think this is the 26 is what they call it. There's a 26 and a 36. The thing I like about this one, and I don't know if they've been this way the whole time, but I don't remember them being like this. They can be really squirrely to put together, but this time the three of these are stacked 
and they're attached right here. And when you tighten the finial ball at the top, it makes them more sturdy than normal because usually it's a tough job to get them all in the ground and to get the rings to match right where they need to go. Of course, it'll be even more stable once you pop it in the ground, but that was probably the easiest time I've had putting one together. That's exciting, I love this. This would be pretty to use in a pot for the holidays, wouldn't it? Okay, I have most of the bulb stuff in the gator at the moment, and I wasn't gonna film any more of this, but I think that these are gonna be really pretty. I'm hoping that the ground is thawed enough around our kitchen entrance to get at least all the crocus in there. I've got hocus crocus, which are purple. There's a purple variety, a white, uh, white variety, and a white striped with purple. So pretty. So 500 of the hocus crocus, 500 of the white squill, and then I forgot I've got some uh, wild tulips here. The Preston Shogun and Lady Jane. So really all I'm hoping to get in the, oh, and a rogue tulip, wonder what kind that is. All I'm really hoping to get done this afternoon is get the crocus in the ground. If we have time, the squill as well. So this is where I'm hoping to put them, right here. I think it would be just so pretty to have that super early purple color in this bed. Let's test the soil out a bit. Oh, we can get in there. You know what? I'm going to go grab a little trowel because Samantha is sleeping right now and her window is really close and I really don't want the auger to wake her up. So we're going to do this old school, get a workout. All right, let's do this. Okay, 500 crocus in the ground. It's gonna be so pretty, I'm so excited about it. Now the weird part about planting today is this spot right here was the most frozen out of the entire area, which this spot usually stays, and it is overall more wet, the soil's more moist, and it stays shadier right there. This area gets sun during the day, so that was kind of an interesting thing. So I didn't plant very many right in here because I physically could not make it through the soil. But as I got underneath the canopy, you know, of the locust and the lilac and the viburnum in there, it did thaw out quite a bit. So I was able to swing the crocus up to the locust trunk and then they just go around this area back behind the fountain underneath the lilac. And then they swing around all the way over to this post. I just popped a few here and there in the perennial section that is here. And there are perennials in here. <laughs> Look at this. There are hookerella and hosta and lamb's ear right in here. There's pincushion flowers. There are um, hydrangeas, things like that. But we have cleared out a lot of this area and we had to, um, well, we didn't have to, uh, but we did clear and cut back stuff when this stone wall was being put in. Which interestingly enough, I found that, remember how the stack stone pavers, they ended about here and then it started in stone and there was a little stone wall that swooped back to this pot and then it dropped down into this flower bed. They didn't take the stones out. <laughs> they just covered them all with soil. So I have a little mini rock wall right here that I'm gonna have to excavate and remove. Always a surprise around here. And you can see I ended up taking my gloves off. Hopefully a bunch of it didn't end up on my face, but um, I can feel those little crocus bulbs a lot easier. I can mess with them a lot easier without gloves on. Um, and it's really not too bad out today. I think I've just stayed warm enough just moving around so my hands aren't cold at all. 
um, even though the soil was kind of icy there. So now with the Scyllas, they're the white squill. I think I'm gonna plant those in one of two different spots. I don't have time this afternoon, um, so I'll just finish that up. It'll look basically like my crocus planting job here. I will excavate little spots where I can fit three bulbs, five bulbs. Sometimes I was able to fit like 15 bulbs in a, in a hole, just so it looks a little bit more irregular. Um, and I will do it either underneath this maple right here, and this is kind of my spot of choice because I just planted all those hellebores in here. Wouldn't it look beautiful to have the scillas and the hellebores blooming sort of at the same time? Or the hellebores will at least be budding up. I think that would be super pretty. I think it's, I don't know, I think the soil will be workable enough to get those in here. If it's not, I've got a spot underneath the birch tree over here where I think they would look really pretty as well. I think it's important with those smaller bulbs that don't grow up super big. You either wanna make sure that they're toward the, well, you do wanna make sure they're toward the front of a border, but also in the winter time, you wanna make sure they're along a path where you're actually gonna see them. So right in this area here, you can see we have a columbine in this area. It's a soft yellow, it's gorgeous. We cut it back like late summer this year and it came back, it was just a beautiful kind of green ground cover of sorts. Uh, but I think it would look pretty to have the scyllas in here as well. So this might prove to be maybe a little bit more thought out. So I'll let you know what location those end up. It'll be one of the two spots. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Another variety of bulbs checked off the list. That always feels good. And I mean, here we are in almost December and I'm thankful we're able to even get them in the ground still. A lot of years, there's no there's no way we'd be able to do that. So I'm super excited about how those are gonna look. And as I was planting them, I thought, how come I haven't done this before? Like put some early stuff in this flower bed. We walk by it multiple times a day. Um, but I also wanted to take a few minutes and give you updates on the projects in the greenhouse. I've noticed quite a number of questions and comments about that, wondering about how those are going. And since we had, you know, the event last week, the freezing event, kind of a good time to show you where things are out at. And you know, you win some, you lose, lose some, and you learn through it. You know, maybe I need to make it more of a routine to just walk around and check doors um, when it's this cold at night. We're getting this cold. We have one night on the forecast at six degrees. Not super looking forward to that. It's been pretty mild up to this point, clearly, since we can still dig. And thank you to Gardener Supply for sending out the things uh, that we unboxed today. That's always fun. Um, it's been a while since we've done that. It was just a really fun day of puttering out here, trying to soak up every ounce of that that I can get before it gets bitter, bitterly cold out here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.